I'm your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. I'm so glad to reach you. I'll be doing a lecture on living a life of significance. It's, I'll take my bearing from Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Matthew 5, 13. A lot of you have been saying that, uh, why have I not been doing videos from the farm? I really love to do videos from the farm, but a lot of things have been happening. I have done a lot of travels outside the farm and uh, I've been quite busy with my wife setting up this new school. And uh, there were some ceremonies that took place, celebrations that took place in my house that I needed to be part of. And uh, one of my children got married and they took a lot of efforts from us. So I'm here in the new school trying to do a test run of my recordings in this place. So that's why you have not been seeing me in the farm. I hope to go back to the farm to do videos there. And speaking on living a life of significance, I was supposed to deliver this seminar um, at um, the Orchids Hotel along DBS Road Asaba, alongside the Labour Party presidential candidate, His Excellency Peter Obi. So I decided to pre-record this uh, message and share it on YouTube because uh, that atmosphere might be very loud and um, rowdy with a lot of cacophony that one might not be able to deliver it the way it's supposed to be. So I'm keeping it on record what I wanted to share them. Living a life of significance. One of the things I learned about um, making a speech from my bishop, Bishop B.C. Edohasin, or preaching a message is definition. You define keywords, and it's only what is defined that can be refined. So what is living? There was a year I told God, Happy New Year. Thank you, Father, for bringing me into this year. He said, my son, you have been existing and you have not been living. And I said, what is existence? He said, existence is breathing in and breathing out, bios, doing and celebrating the things animals do, like having children, building houses and all that, traveling. And then what is living? It's until somebody thanks me because of you that you have not lived. So living is letting somebody thank God because of you coming in. When somebody comes in contact with you, he feels God because it is God that is your life. So living is the expression, the exudation, the, the, the dispensing of the tangibility of divinity in you so that it becomes reality to humanity. When your positive impact remains and develops and replicates in other people's lives, even after you have departed, then you have lived and you are living. So we can pass away and we are still living in people. An example is Mary Slessor. Mary Slessor was a missionary that came to Calabar, Okoyong in particular, to stop the killing of twins. She came from Scotland. And um, I was driving one day, and a road safety official saw missionary on my windshield, and he told me to park. Asked me, are you a missionary? I said, yes. In my mind, I said, has it become an offense to be a missionary? And he said, I am a twin, and then um, we were the last set of twins that were not killed in a Keremo because of Mary Slessor's effect. And so anytime I see a missionary, I'm excited and I want to fraternize with that person. And so he became my very good friend until he retired. So Mary Slessor had has died and gone, but the effect of Mary Slessor is still in the mind of that road safety official and Mary Slessor is still living in him. 
every twin that is alive in South South Nigeria is alive because of the life of Mary Slesson. And so nearly most, most prominent universities in the South South and um, Southern Nigeria have halls named after Mary Slesson. So Mary Slesson made people to thank God and still makes people to thank God and replicated her life in others by opening Hope Wardell School. She was among those who opened Hope Wardell College and she introduced a lot of fruits to the Calabar area. And um, through establishing Hope Wardell, football was um, introduced into that area. So Mary Slesser still lives. Just like the man that introduced um, a football to Brazil, Introducing football to Brazil, nearly every time a Brazil win, Brazil wins a laurel or a Brazilian footballer is celebrated, there was a man who brought football to Brazil. Just like the man who introduced coffee to Martinique. Coffee is from Ethiopia. But there was an America, a French sailor who took a seedling of coffee, nursed it, put it in a ship, he was sharing his water with that uh, coffee seedling. And eventually the coffee seedling got to Martinique, that volcanic um, archipelago there. And the plant grew, formed plantations. Today, 1.2 million tons of coffee are imported from South America into United States of America. Out of that 1.2 million tons, 800 million tons of coffee, um, 800, uh, 1.2 million, 800,000 tons of coffee originate from that simple seed that was taken to Martinique. So anytime you drink coffee in the United States, you are living and enjoying the effect of the the activity of one soldier, one sailor that took coffee to Martinique. So that is living, that positive impact that outlives you. And that's what Africans and Nigerians should be thinking about. It is different from bios, which is breathing in and breathing out, and the celebration of what animals do. Animals have children, animals deliver multiple children, Animals travel long distances and arrive safely. So animals cross from year to year. A tortoise can grow, can live for 100 and something years. So that you lived till 90, 70, 80. It's not a big deal if your life does not affect people, make meaning in, um, in people as such that the people can thank God because of you. It is being an extension of God's hand, living is being an extension of God's hand. Like Sister Teresa Mary in Calcutta, there were people who were sick, people who were, uh, had um, health challenges, who were hungry, who were homeless, who were naked. Sister Teresa Mary went to Calcutta and took care of them. And she became a Nobel Prize winner. And her effect and legacy is still there, even after she has departed. That is living. So another example of living is Paeltin in Elisha. Paeltin, a missionary, came to Elisha and with his wife, through him, people like Archbishop Benson Idaosa, um, Emiko, Emeka Wangpa, um, several others got to develop their Christian lives and faith through him and the prophecies he made concerning Nigeria, some people believe that they are going to be fulfilled in this lifetime through people like Peter Obi. So Pa Elton's effect is still um, trending, as we were saying on social media, even after he has departed. I hear his daughter is, um, is still carrying on with the work. So it is not based on wealth. It is not based on uh, structures. It is not based on, um, on how many buildings you left behind, how many children you have. It's slightly different from importance, slightly different from size. 
So, we David Livingstone in Zambia did missionary work there, and several things are named after him there, and he's still he's still alive, just like Nelson Mandela, that is living, living. The question you must ask yourself: Are you existing or you are living? Who thanks God on a daily basis because of you? I was eating in a restaurant in the airport. I saw the sponsor of my radio program off. And um, as a young man heard my voice, he said, are you Dr. Apoke? I said, yes. Oh, your program has changed my life. I listen every Wednesday. And then I said, see the man who pays for the program. And he went and started thanking the man and telling the man how the program had changed his life. I was going to Orerope to... For the register to collect the certificate of registration of this school. And as I greeted the policeman, how are you, sir? How is your family? You know, most people don't know that these people have families and they are human beings too. I made it, I took it upon myself that when I say policeman, good, uh, good afternoon, sir. How are you? As your family, are you hearing from them? Your work is not easy, and they don't harass me. So when I asked this, I said, Are you Dr. Poki? I said, Yes. Oh, the man that says the truth. That's what he said. A police officer. So you 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 have influence on people's lives, you have seeds on in people's lives that have tried to become trees and they are bearing further fruits that will be replicated in other people's lives, even after you have gone. What is life? Life is the investment of the nature of God, and it is a reflection of his existence and presence in your life. There is the story in Abba. A guest preacher came to preach in a church and said, if your husband is dead, please come outside. Uh, please come outside. And so a woman came out. And then the guest speaker knows the husband of the wife, uh, the, the husband of that woman, and said, we are saying that those whose husbands are alive should stay inside. Batani me church. In the dia, I mean the in the were di Batani me church. In the dia wara wu putani isi. They told the woman, uh, you are you are not a widow. So I marry I marry me him name me. I know what I am doing. So the man pointed to the husband. Is this not your husband? The woman pointed at the husband and said, Onya odindu, Onya odindu. That is to say, is this man alive? Is this one? This one? Ka odindu. Is this one alive? That is to say, the man is not functioning like a living person. He is just there. You know, he is not reflecting manhood, reflecting the nature of God, reflecting the existence of God in him. So, what is living a significant life? So, I've defined living, I've defined life. What about significance? You will see that significance has... Uh, five, um, four letters first, S-I-G-N, which means sign, and then ficans. So an important sign. When an action or a thing creates a noticeable result which deviates from that expected to arise from simple random variation or errors, in sampling, it is said to be significant. Something causes a noticeable reaction, a noticeable result, a noticeable consequence, a noticeable tilting. Newton's law of motion says that everything continues in a state of rest or permanent motion until a force is applied. That point that something happens, that thing that happens, no matter how little, that causes a ripple effect or a tangible or signatory effect is significant. Something that invariably determines the outcome of several other things. From where I read Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, it says, You are the salt of the earth. It says, If salt loses its saltiness, it says, It is of no use that men trample upon it. I had always been thinking, how can salt lose its saltiness? And I started going through the internet to find how salt loses its saltiness. And I discovered that salt in those days was not this kind of refined salt. 
it might be rock salt with ginseng and several other impurities in it. But you see, when you put salt into a meal, you will immediately notice that salt has entered that meal. You will notice the significant the sign that there is a change, the deviation and the resultant effect. But in those days, salt contained impurities. And when salt absorbs moisture, if it absorbs moisture and the water is evaporating from it, the solution that contains sodium chloride evaporates and leaves the impurities alone as sediments. Those impurities do not have the taste of salt. And what they did in those days, they packed them, if it was large quantity, they put them on the road and people trample on them. They cake and they trample on them. They use them to fill roads. If you have been to Salt Pond in Ghana or to Port Elizabeth in South Africa, you will know what I'm talking about. You can see the roofs of, um, of the houses in uh, Port Elizabeth or South Africa that are made of corrugated iron sheets. A lot of the metallic objects that have iron, Fe, around that area rust because of the corrosion of salt that evaporates with water on the roofing sheets or the railings or the met metal objects that are made of iron. So when salt evaporates, when it absorbs so much moisture, I will talk about that later, how salt loses its saltiness. Salt can also lose its saltiness when there is over dilution. Over dilution. You bring other impurities into it. Maybe you add sugar, you add different things. It might lose its saltiness. Or when you pour too much water into it and dissolves it, or it absorbs too much moisture from the environment, in the case of the old types of salt, it will lose its saltiness. I will talk about that later. But I want to use a character study to illustrate what living a significant life means. I want to use somebody called Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks was born in February 9, uh, 4th, 1913. And she died in um, October 24th, 2005. In December 1st, 1955, in Montgomery, a driver called James Blake ordered this woman at the age of 42, a seamstress, to vacate her seat in the bus. Yes, in the buses in the United States in those days, they were segregate, segregated. And um, they would put a mark, colored people, and then white people. This day, four new people enter the bus, and the places reserved for white people had filled up. And Rosa Parks was told to move back so that those people could sit where colored people were sitting, were supposed to sit. And she refused to move. That set something into motion. And so she refused to move. And this led to the boycott of buses in Montgomery. This attracted a human rights activity of the National Association of um, Colored People. His name is Edgar Nixon. And at the same time, Martin Luther King Jr., was a pastor in that same area. This subsequently led them to boycott buses for one year and um, led to a court case. And in 1956, there was a decision that in the court that abolished segregation in buses. So that singular act of refusing to move led to the abolition of segregation in buses. It was a significant move. You will see why significance is different from any other action that contributes. You will see that it is the game changer. It is the melting point. It is the, when you do titration, there is the, an end point where the color of the acid or whatever, the base changes to red or pinkish. That is the end point. Anything beyond that nullifies 
your titration. Rosa Parks, because of that action, won several awards. Won pre the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Won the Congressional Gold Medal. And uh, she became a House of Representative member, an honorary seamstress. And um, she was in 2005 when she died. She was the first woman to lie in honor in the Capitol Rotunda. That's where the Senate and the House of Representatives in the United States meet. The first woman to ever lie in state there and honored that same black woman. Martin Luther King Jr. was not was conscripted into the human rights movement because of the bus boycott. He just came in there. I was thinking of what to do to end seg segregation. But this singular act of boycotting buses as a result of the refusal of Rosa Park to move drafted him into the movement. And because of that movement, several racist laws were, were repealed repealed sequentially and eventually it allowed somebody like Barack Obama to become president of the United States of America and lived in the White House. You cannot divorce that singular act of Rosa Park refusing to get up from Barack Obama becoming president. So, but the whole incident did not start in uh, that day. It started a long time before then. It did not start in 1955. Uh, uh, in 1943, a black woman paid for her bus ticket. And the rule then was that after paying in the front where the driver collected your money, gave, issued you a ticket, because you were black, you will not go through the aisle to the back seat. You had to come down and go through the back door of the bus to sit at the back. And Rosa Park paid. It was raining. It was winter. It was cold rain. And she didn't want to go out and um, enter the bus from the back. She wanted to pass through. And uh, James Blake told her to come down. She came down before she could enter the bus. James Blake drove away. Remember, she was 30 years old as at that time. So she was a youth because I'm going to be speaking to youths. She was a young woman, 30 years a youth. And um, the definition of youth in um, Nigeria extends up to 40, 45. So even at the age of 42, when she refused to get up from her seat, she was still a youth. And I had done a video that it is the energy of youths that change nations. It is the anger of youths against the oppressive status quo that change nations. Youths have the energy to cause significant change in nations because most times old people are beneficiaries of the corruption in most nations. This is not, I'm not talking about segregation now. So, um, this 30 year old black woman, Rosa Parks, resolved that she will not enter any bus driven by um, James Blake. Ironically, James Blake died of a heart attack about five years before Rosa Parks died. He was of no significance, no consequences. He was still defending what he did, that he was just doing his job. I agree with him. But Rosa Park outlived him, became a prominent citizen, celebrated all over the world. So one other thing that culminated in that significant activity was that she would be trekking to school, but she could see white children travel to school with buses while she went to school on foot. And this black woman refused to accept the status quo. There was a young man called Emmett Till. 
who was killed in that same 1955 because she was said he was said to have flirted around a white girl and they beat her to death white people beat her to death because he went near a white girl Barack Obama's father could marry a white woman, the mother, because Rosa Park hated that evil. And so she was thinking of that evil that was meted out to Emmett Till when she entered that bus. As she entered that bus and Blake told her to, to shift, it was a culmination of several things happening in her mind, that singular activity was the significant change that led her to live a significant life. Let me also tell you sometime, something that happened. Uh, just before that incident, his uh, younger brother was going out with him and um, some one young boy wanted to beat his younger brother. Rosa Parks picked his to a brick and waved the brick towards the white boy. The white boy ran. So inherently, in the mind of Rosa Park, she detested injustice. If you tolerate everything in life, you can live a life of significance. There is a time when you get angry with some things. There is a time when you get, you get to a point that something drastic needs to be done by you. If not, the status quo will continue. People say I'm not normal, and I, I know. People say that I'm aggressive, and I know. People say that um, I, I give people water, water, if they attack me on Facebook. I know. Being very nice all the time is expensive. If pineapples don't have thorns, animals, you won't see any to harvest. Animals will eat all the pineapples in the farm. But because they have tongues, they can tear their tongues. If a lion goes there and holds pineapple and his paw is pricked, he can die of hunger because of infection of that palm. So, uh, if the palm tree does not have tongues around the body in the beginning, any little person can climb it and harvest it. But it gathers enough tongues around it until it grows to a height where you can harvest it from the ground, then it sheds them. Even sugar cane has little thorns. So it's not just good to be too nice. No, 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 no. Sometimes you hit me, I hit you hard. You quack me, I quack you. It's only Jesus that can lay down his life and pick it up again. And some of the scriptures in the Bible were written during the era of occupation. They were not written for free citizens. Jesus lived when Roman occupation was on in the land of Israel. It wasn't in the time of freedom. There were no human rights at that time, so we have freedom. There are scriptures you don't just swallow. Slaves be obedient to master. Slavery has ended, and you can't practice slavery in this dispensation. So better read your Bible well. Don't look at me like that. I know what I'm talking about. So you, before you to live a significant life, you must detest oppressive status quo. You must, and that's what we don't, we, we have not, we, that's the problem we're having in Nigeria. The beneficiaries of the corruption, of the oil theft, beneficiaries of uh, nepotism, beneficiaries of all kinds of oil subsidy and theft over budgeting, expensive legislative arm, expensive executive arm, people earning pensions, right, left, and center, you senator, you earn pension. When you live there, you earn pension as a governor. When you retire, they will build a house for you in Abuja, build a house for you in Lagos, pay you three times your salary. You are entitled to two billion naira monthly as a um, as security vote. They call it pocket money, some 900 million, 800 million. No person questions you. And so that's why people hate anything that will bring change to this country. So if you see people supporting politicians, a lot of them are beneficiaries of the rot. If they support corrupt politicians, they are beneficiaries, beneficiaries of the rot. So uh, just before that incident, 
the young man I mentioned his name, uh, Till, was uh, was killed. Emmett Till was killed, and the killers were acquitted. If not for Black Lives Matter, uh, George Floyd will have died a useless death. They will have acquitted those people. But something significant happened when George Floyd's death was recorded and the body of black people came together and opposed and fought legally and socially and emotionally. And those people that killed him were sentenced. So uh, to a large extent, the misbehavior of um, white people against black people in the United States of America um, will, to a large extent, go down gradually. There's more resistance to it. So Rosa Park resisted James Blake's order, and she was arrested. And then the subsequent boycott went on. I will tell you something about her. So um, why did Rosa Park live a significant life? She passionately hated the injustice and the status quo. People are not passionate about many things. She thought beyond herself, so you must think beyond, beyond yourself if you will live a life that is significant. If you always think of only yourself, you, me, and my family, you can't live a significant life. Uh, I've tried to record this message up to four times in this flat, and I'm going beyond myself to do it because of you because of somebody. So all that I'm doing in this country goes beyond me. My children are not going to school here, but I have a beautiful school here and I'm going to employ people. So you must live beyond yourself. If you live beyond yourself, then you can make meaning. You can make live a significant life. There were three other black passengers in that same seat. When they told them to get up, they resisted. But after some time, they obeyed because they were afraid of the consequences of going to prison. Sometimes you need courage. You need to put your life on the line. You need to put your reputation on the line. You need to put several things like comfort on the line. Your friendship with some people is on the line. Somebody wrote me that because of my success in ministry, I should not make political posts. No, I told him that I will make more, make enemies. I said, I already have enough enemies. I have enough enemies. Just adding a few more to the enemies I have will not uh, make any significant difference. A lady told me today that she slapped a man in the printing press because the person said that if, if he has a gun, he will shoot Dr. Apoki, that man that preaches on radio. Because what I'm saying is offensive to him. But it's the truth. If I am willing to compromise and make friends with people and uh, be popular, I wouldn't say the things I'm saying. I don't care who does not like me. Sometimes I don't care about the consequences of saying the truth. So Rosa Park was willing to go to prison. You see, the three other black people that got up they, they have what is called Stockholm Syndrome. When you fraternize, you protect, you fall in love with your oppressor. And that is the problem with third world nations. We celebrate our oppressors. Look at what has just happened in the Philippines. Imelda Ferdinand Marcos and Imelda Marcos were a tyrannical couple in Philippines. Imelda Marcos had 3,000 pairs of shoes. So if she wore one shoe every day, it would take her 10 years to finish her pairs of shoes. And it is suspected that um, um, Marcos, Ferdinand Marcos, killed Aquino's husband, Kurana Aquino's husband, shot him in the airport. But after so many years, these same people have voted back uh, uh, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. to be their president. They, they have short memory. And Nigerians in particular have short memory. So you, you tolerate stupidity, you tolerate poverty, you tolerate uh, insults, you tolerate uh, uh, inefficiency, you tolerate... No, I don't. I'm aggressive. 
and I don't care whether you like me or not. Rosa Park was not the first person to defy the rule. Other two women have refused to get up from their seats before now and were detained. But they could not stand. The Black People, National Association of Colored People, could not stand on their case to fight for desegregation. Why? Those women had questionable lifestyles and reputations. If they went to court, they would have been shredded. They would have torn the, their case apart, made a mess of them, said they were irresponsible people. But Rosa Park had a good record. What's happening in Nigeria today is that we are going back and tracing the steps of people. So, assuming Peter Obi has a track record that people could lay their hands on, all this is an obedient thing we just fizzle out. But EFCC, all other investigative agencies don't have anything against him. Assuming he was expelled from his secondary school, that would be used against him. Assuming he raped a lady in the university, that would be used against him. What am I trying to say? Because I will be speaking predominantly to youths. It is true that none of us is a spirit or a saint, but try as much as possible to start living intentionally to cause a change in society, a significant change in society by living a straight life. A very straight life is very important. I know the day I sleep with one girl, boy, they will come on me. I know the day I do contract and I don't execute it, the government will come for me. Imagine I call the taxi, the boat, to carry me to the um, the, um, bus station. And he said, sir, do you know they monitor you? I know. People don't like me. Imagine somebody just said that. He would have shot me if he had a gun. I don't know him. And I don't care. The point remains that your future starts now. Your future starts now, young people. You can, one mistake can derail the whole of your life. One careless act. Live a disciplined life. Live intentionally and develop character. Develop another C capacity. Develop another C competence. Develop another C charisma. And develop courage to say no. If I went to where Fadam Baka was, and he was calling me a miser, and they was trying to make me donate money like as he did to Peter Obi, most likely I would have succumbed. But Peter Obi resisted and did not donate. So you must develop um, character, capacity, competence, charisma, and courage when you are young. When you are young. Mary Sless, as I promised to share with you, was going to Sunday school in Scotland. And some boys confronted her and swung a rod in front of her, metallic rod. And she did not shake. She did not flinch. And the leader of the gang asked her, <clears throat> where are you going to? She said, I'm going to church. They said, we'll follow you to church. And they got born again and became Christians. It was that courage in her, the refusal to be intimidated, that made her to be bold enough to come to stop the killing of twins. If you want to behave like every other person, the Bible says that, Cowards will not inherit the kingdom of God. Most people who blend and join others to misbehave and to behave the way they want to behave is because they are afraid of being different. So they get over diluted their impurities. The little of the life of God in them evaporates and only the impurities remain. One of the things I've learned to do is to live my life and be mad 
be motivated, adventurous, aggressive, determined, and driven to achieve what I want to do. My child married recently, and in my culture, you need to tie a wrapper, wear walking stick, and all that. The wrapper I have in my box, I have not tied it since the last day I tied it. In fact, I'm going to give it a tailor to sew a dress for me that I'll be wearing to go and preach. So I said, don't buy a wrapper for me. I'm going to wear a trouser and attend the ceremony so that I can wear the trouser to preach again. I don't have any choral bead that will cost 500,000, uh, 250, just fold, fold it in my box. I believe that the cap you wear, the lace you wear, the walking stick you wear, the shoe you wear, the wrapper you wear, are not produced by your tribe, particularly my tribe. So what's traditional about it? And I dare to think for myself, and I'm bold to be different. And you can't do me anything. I don't need to blend with you. I am myself. I'm Dr. Apoki. I don't need to resemble you. During the reception uh, for my child's marriage in this compound, I had booked a program to speak, and the people had done billboards. I went a day before the traditional marriage, which was my wife's birthday, and then... Uh, they, they did the traditional marriage, I was there. They did the wedding, I was there. They came for reception. When it was time for me to go and preach, I left the reception to go and honor God's work because if not for God, I wouldn't be where I am now. I can't allow the celebration to take, a, take me away from the work of God. And my wife hollered, hollered, but I don't care. She hollered, she let her cool down. Because there are children who don't have fathers who are alive, they wed and they do their receptions. When I married, my father was not there. This is a decision. That was a decision I needed to take to satisfy my conscience that these people that have spent so much money doing billboards advertising the program, I cannot disappoint them. And I took that decision, contrary to what any other person is going to say. And somebody said, Dr. Pook is not a normal person. It's only abnormal people that cause significant change. People who think differently, who dare to act differently. So, the significant lifestyle is born out of detesting the status quo, as I said several times. Dying to be different. Have a dream life. This is the kind of life Rosa Parks needed a life of freedom for herself and her children and others. It comes from drive, comes from holy anger. She was angry for how many years? Is it, is it 12 years? Against Blake, leaving her in the rain, requires determination and dedication. How many Ds? One D, two, three, two, one, two, three, four, about five Ds. I said, you must be mad enough. M-A-A-D-D, -A -D, motivated, aggressive, and uh, adventurous driven and determined enough to say never again until you get to that point and say never again and then live beyond yourself you cannot live a significant life i was reading online and somebody wrote very often it is a villain who strikes the spark in the awesome moment in history and very often a soft-spoken regular citizen is thrust into the role of a hero. An ordinary person, just an ordinary person, just a soft-spoken person. But the villain will do something that will make the person just take a decision and he becomes a hero. Let me ask you this question. Peter Obi has been in Nigerian politics. He was in APGA. He was in PDP. He was vice presidential candidate under Atiku. But he was diluted. He was diluted in PDP. Obi, I mean, uh, yeah, Dati Baba Ahmed was diluted in PDP. It was that singular action that Obi took of not subjecting his head to be shaved in the PDP. See, Wiki causing a lot of problems for them. See, Wiki, the rules of the convention were changed. So that uh, 
Tamboa can come and speak twice. In a convention, you finish speaking, you get away from the stage. And Wiki is angry. And that singular action would bring the PDP down. So Atiko is saying that Peter Obi did not inform him. You don't need to inform people before you do some actions. Assuming um, uh, Abraham has told Sarah that he was going to sacrifice Isaac, Sarah would have prevented Isaac from, uh, from uh, prevented Abraham from sacrificing Isaac. So there are decisions you need to take. Labour Party was an ordinary party, ordinary party. I've been to Labour Party headquarters before with uh, Olusegun Mimiko when he wanted to be president. Olusegun Mimiko is another good man. It's a BA project. It was such a wonderful project that the World Health Organization recommended and recognized it. And the uh, commissioner's wife was having birth with the children, with uh, drivers in the hospital. So, but just moving into Labour Party was a significant change in the Nigerian polity and a significant change in the Labour Party, and a significant change in the life of Peter Obi, and the life of Peter Obi has become a significant life. One singular action that you dare to take. They say he is soft-spoken. The man is soft-spoken, but this soft-spoken man is causing change in this country. God bless you. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. I remain your friend. Dr. Charles Apoki living a significant life. God bless you.